How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Now this is a podcast from the Chase the Craft podcast. You can find it on chasethecraft.com slash podcast or on any of your favorite podcatchers. Now normally I just take an excerpt from each podcast and throw it up here on YouTube to keep the videos nice and short because that's what the YouTube algorithm likes. People keep telling me that uh, they want the full thing. They want the real long video. So... I'll try it. <laughs> if you're into this and you want to see more of this, you need to drop a comment, you need to hit the like button uh, and show the algorithm some love, get this thing going and let me know that you're keen on it. Otherwise, I'll go back to doing it the other way. Anyway, keep on chasing the craft guys and enjoy this talk with Nevin from Capella Distillery in Croatia talking about his local Rakia spirit. Nevin, it is an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast, dude. I, I will admit right now, I have never tried any of your spirits. And to be honest, with the, the distance between us, the amount of world between us, that might take a while to do so. But I've heard, heard really good things from people that I, I trust and respect. So thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thanks, uh, Big thanks to Jeff Bradford to connect us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For those that you don't know uh jeff runs a youtube channel called beer one and spirits and he essentially is lucky enough and awesome enough to travel all over the world meeting people just like you dude oh yeah uh, Je <laughs> jeff, uh, i love watching his episodes you know and uh, we hit it off uh, as you know the first day he, he arrived here to croatia we have a lot of things in common you know just like instantly you know good friends and uh you know People, if you're watching this, uh, you know, subscribe to Jeff's channel, su subscribe to Jesse's channel, to Jesse's podcast. Hey. You know, these are you know, <laughs> great channels. And, uh, you know, once again, uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I must admit, I haven't seen many of your podcasts, but, you know, since Jeff told me, uh, I went through a lot of them, you know, a couple of hours of watching daily. So and I really like it. It's 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 really cool. It's very relaxed. You know, like you know, a lot of good good uh, good material for people. So keep it going. Yeah, man. The whole the whole point was just to be relaxed and chill. And I mean, the, we're going to get into this, right? And there is so many different variables in the the hobby and the industry of distilling, where a YouTube video where you have to kind of keep things short and succinct and on topic and only use so many words and edit it short and all that stuff to, to play the youtube algorithm oh, game yeah. you oh, just yeah. don't get to have interesting conversations like you can when you just get to talk to someone you know oh yeah 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 it's you no know, you, you have to keep it uh, short and interesting you know um, yeah people's uh, attention span is not that long so no, yeah. <laughs> it's and it, it's weird, man, because people say they want to see a longer video, but uh, it just doesn't work out that way. It really doesn't. I like to do one. I like to throw one up there every now and again. That's a little longer, I guess, just to test it out again. But yeah, they they don't do so great. Yeah. But anyway, enough of that, man. Um, yeah. We appreciate you coming on. And I mean, we're here to talk Rakia, which yeah. is... Is there something... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those of you that can't see... Uh, see the video that we're we're you know recording right now if you're listening to the podcast uh nevin's got a rakia connecting people shirt on just like nokia it's uh it's awesome i might have to i might have to figure out how to get one of those off you dude yeah. <laughs> yeah. um we'll sort it out yeah 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 so is there is there a difference between rakia and brandy like is there is there something that makes rakia rakia or is it just what? your word for brandy no we, we're here you know Okay, let's talk about the definition shortly. Yeah, so, you know, it's uh, when you when you go through languages, you know, in, in English, in English language, uh, from what I understood, uh, talking to people in the industry, uh, some people call it eau de vie, you know, from mm. French, water of life, and uh, which is the same base, like you know, from as Latin aqua vita, the same base that uh, whiskey got its name, and uh, you, there also there's also a term fruit brandy. And then people said, you know, people that are, you know, uh, that are a long time in this industry and let's say people that are, you know, setting standards that eau de vie is usually used for clear spirit and, and fruit brandy is usually used when it's aged. That's, that's uh, what I heard uh, is as in English language as terms. Uh, 
uh, Germans call it schnapps, we call it rakia, uh, no matter whether it's aged or it's just a clear spirit. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it depends on the country. So, you know, if, if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, talk about it, you know, like as we're speaking now in English, you know, we can call it, you know, fruit brandy or or the V or whatever, you know, so people that can distinguish the differences between aged and, and the clear one. Yeah. Okay, cool. So in, in actual process and definition, there's not something that separates it. Is there a, is there a regional flair to it? Like something that, you know, if I lined up five different brandies made from mm -hmm. five different places in the world, and then I put a Arakia in there from somewhere near your local area, mm -hmm. Would you be able to, do you think you'd be able to taste which one was from your area? Is there something that makes it local? I cannot really say I would. Yeah, it, right. It's, you know, uh, fruit spirits are very uh, delicate and uh, it's very hard to make a high-end fruit spirit because mm -hmm. there, are, there are so many uh, components in the whole process, you know, so many variables. We usually say here that you know okay this is our opinion you know people from i don't know from scotland from us will say that whiskey is you know it's much harder to make that it's it's, yeah. it's, it's more <laughs> delicate it's more like this you know like people who make more uh, gin they're going to say this about gin and so on and so on you know so uh but you know but we all fight for our things so yeah, it's 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 a, it's a fair game uh yeah i was just gonna say i think the the one thing that is absolutely undisputable is the the how hard you have to fight for yield with fruit spirits right oh yeah like the amount of raw products that you use compared to the product you get at the end is i mean do you want to kind of compare what what your yield is compared to something like whiskey if you know the whiskey game i'm not sure we haven't talked to whiskey yeah, 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 yeah you have whiskey you have a much higher yield you have like three times higher yield because you know you, it, when you when you uh do, do the mash you know like you, you put like i don't know uh two thirds of water th three quarters of water and the rest is you know the rest is the uh the grains and uh so practically you use much less of of, mat of raw material than with, than with fruit okay there you have you have you have to mash it you have to convert starch to sh to fermentable sugars so you know uh it's it, it's uh, part of the process that you don't have with fruit spirits where you already have fermentable uh, sugars, you have fructose in, in, in fruit and it, it's ready to ferment right away. But the thing is uh, about uh, about rakia, you know, about fruits, fruit spirits, uh, it's you have to really be careful about the sort of the fruit, about uh, the maturity of the fruit, you know, if, it, if it's ripe. Uh, you have to, depends on, as with wines, you know, depends on the year, if there was enough sun, there's going to be enough sugars mm. in it. So if the more sugar in the fruit, the more alcohol you have, you know, and then you have, uh, if you have more acids, you know, esters, uh, you know, that create, you, you get, uh, you get more aromas. And then it also depends on, uh, on, on, uh, on yeast, which yeast yeast you use, uh, Back here uh, at home, uh, you know, in this whole area, uh, you know, the whole former Yugoslavia and Balkans, you know, including Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria uh, region, uh, the whole Balkans, let's say, uh, people mostly uh, uh, leave it to wild yeast. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So they literally just cut the fruit up or mash the fruit up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, and then when we're just talking about, you know, home distilling, if we're talking about home distilling, you know, people are using wild yeast. Uh, yeah. There are people that use selected yeasts, and mostly these are wine yeasts. So uh, there is a whole, you know, uh, whole palette of, of wine yeast from many, many manufacturers, you know, like uh, uh, that you can use. And uh, it's just, you know, you have to uh, experiment with it to see what you're going, what, what you're going to get. You know, you know how, how the yeast is. Yeast creates like I don't know, sixty, seventy percent of the flavor. Uh, yeah. So. When you take all that in consideration, you know, if it was the right year, if the fruit was ripe when you picked it, you know, uh, what which yeast did you use? At what uh, uh, temperature did it ferment? With which yeast? The distillation, uh, you have to uh, be careful when you're, you know, uh, when you're making the cuts. Uh, 
No, it's it's not it's not that bad if you if you leave a bit if if you, if you cut earlier, but you have to make a straight cut, you know, uh, before the tails, because it goes bad very fast, and it also yeah, right. depends on the, on the type of the steel that you used for the stilling. So and then aging, you have to leave it to uh, let's say to stabilize because you know when the spirit comes out of the steel, it's in the state of chaos. You know, it was under the, the pressure of like, you know, chemical, physical reactions. And uh, you have to leave it, you know, for the aromas to, you know, to, to let's say to harmonize. To marry. Yeah. yeah. yeah to, to marry. Come together again. Yeah. yeah. In, the, in the vessels where you leave some air to have the oxidation also, if you're not putting in the barrels, you, know, you, you, you usually put it in stainless steel or, or, or glass. Glass is the best. But you know, stainless steel is good. So mostly, if we, when we're talking about home distilling, people usually have glass vessels of, but you know, whatever kind. So you know, like, you, you know, jugs or those like you know, from wine, ten, yeah. five liter ones or whatever. Yeah, and it takes time. You know, months. You know, I I don't touch my stuff at least three months. So even if you're creating a white spirit, yeah, yeah, you're gonna yeah. let it. Just chill, I, I, let it marry, let it relax, let it all come together, oxidize a little bit. I have to imagine, yeah, even yeah, that yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least three months, I don't touch it, but it's usually six months. Oh, well, wow. okay, months, and then I start uh, diluting it, you know, with uh, demineralized water. Uh, so if you want, you know, you can you, you, you can try things like using spring water, okay? It's gonna, oh, right. yeah, it's gonna have minerals inside in, in it and, and things like that. So, uh, uh, but it might change, but it might change the flavor a bit. But you can say like you know, it's it's the local thing, you know, mm, the local water. Yeah, right. you know, so <laughs> it, it, it has a certain kind of terroir. So yeah, but it, usually it's it's just demineralized water, you know, distilled water. You know, how, over here they call it, uh, we call it distilled water, but it's all just demineralized water. So right, there are so many things to unpack here, uh, and I'm trying to think of. You know, from from the point of someone like myself, who you know, kind of knows their way around a still, but doesn't. I, I've never made brandy before, so this this is this whole process is fascinating to me. Especially, you know, I, I think everyone tends to when they learn something new, they relate it back to what they know, right? So, yeah. and for me, that that mostly is is whiskey. So maybe maybe let's start at the beginning of the process and and kind yeah. of pick out some key differences. Uh, along the way, and then I've got about fifty questions for you from what you just said. I'll, I'll try and remember all of them as we go. <laughs> but, but I, 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 I think just we have to... in the, you know the more comfortable I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I've got a drink by the way, guys. I don't know. It's it's like uh, ten o'clock for Nevin there, so yeah, yeah. He's, he's uh, maybe not drinking yet. Early. I have my. Uh, I got I got the uh, plum. Oh, you know yeah. what? Yeah, dude, show us the bottles for the people, Here, for the know, Patreons and the, the yeah, yeah, the grab one, them. The one that I made when Jeff was there, this, so this is a, uh, a year, oh, year and a half old. Yeah. It's the same spirit? Oh, that's really yeah, cool, man. Same spirit. I got like a few bottles left. So this is the clear one. Okay, these are, so as we are uh, opening the distillery soon, uh, so these are just a, a test test labels. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, didn't dark, measure, right, we didn't measure right, so they'll be a bit too big for the bottle. But you know. <laughs> so this this is going to be designed. Capella Distilling Company. It's it's the name of the uh, of the company of the distillery. Capella is the, is the name of the mountain uh, where I'm um, from. Yeah. I was just about to ask you what the significance of yeah. that was. This is our tagline: cool. Nature Spirits Within. Yeah, cool. So it's super it's for the people listening to the podcast. It's real yeah. clean. It's um, essentially. I was going to say it's basically black and white, but that makes it sound really basic. It's not. It's it's dope. Uh, let the people know where your website is so they can go and check these yeah. out for themselves. It's probably the easiest way to do this, Nevin. Oh. And this is the aged one. This is something that, you know, I, uh, I used wood chips just, you know, to age it a bit with wood chips. Mm -hmm. And uh, it completely changes the flavor. Uh, yeah, nice, man. Not completely, but, you know, it, it changes a lot. So uh, we can talk about aging fruit spirits also, you know, just, you know, Put it on the big burner now, and uh... yeah, I, I think if we go through in order of the process, that'll that'll yeah. save us forgetting as much as possible. But before we get into that, I want to talk about this. So, you have essentially had distilling in your blood <laughs> since you were a kid, right? Like you just grew up around it. Yeah, I don't know, eight, nine years old. 
since I was first time around the still, you know, with my father and with my uncle, you know, and with all other guys from, from the village, you know, where, where my father is from. So I was born in this, uh, it, it's a small town, it's named Ogulin in, in Croatian. Uh, so, and our, the village where my father is from is some like 15, 20 kilometers from there. So we were often, you know, often we were going over there, you know, over the weekends and the whole, during the holidays because my father was helping his mom and, and her brother who, to work the land, you know, and uh, we were going all the time, you know, friends back home, they're playing football and I have to go and, uh, you know, dig around the potatoes and, you know, <laughs> collect hay for, for cows and things like that. So, but, you know, I'm, I, now I'm really happy I, I, I did that. Uh, because I, I know so many things about uh, agriculture, about farming, and it really yeah. helps. It's insane what you just learned by osmosis, by being around stuff. That that's an education that you can't you can't pay for that. The only way to do that is to do that, is is to be around it. So, what made you flip from? Uh, you know, this is something I do with my father, or something that I do to preserve fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, I'm assuming when you go into going into autumn, w what changed from that into, oh, I'm going to do this professionally. Well, you know, uh, mostly frustration at work. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So you had a day job that you didn't particularly yeah, want it's to. It's not be. that I didn't like it. Uh, I wasn't completely satisfied with myself. You know, like you know, you know, there's there are. Uh, periods in life when you're just like, you know, you're not happy with anything, with yourself, with the situation you're in, and, uh, you know, it doesn't fulfill you completely. It was a nice job. It was a decent job. I was I was working as a, a marketing manager for a, a, an IT company back home here in Rijeka. Uh, it's, it's a good company and uh, great people I was working with, but it's just, you know, like, you know, it, I feels like a treadmill. <laughs> you're, just, you're just like running in place, going yeah, 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 all the time, the same things, you know, all the yeah. time, the same problems. All the, you know, I'm not saying in this in distilling, it's not the same. Okay, in distilling, you, you have same things, same problems. Somebody will say that, but it's just um, at least they're your problems, though, right? Like if it's yeah, your business yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, it's, it's, and you're um, the guy that's responsible. If you succeed, it's because you did a good job, and if you fail, it's because you screwed up. Yeah, and yeah, there's exactly. something fulfilling about. Knowing yeah. that when you go to work, I'm responsible. Day, right? I'm the responsible yeah. one for myself now. You know, so it's it's it has yeah. nothing to do with the other company or working for somebody else. You know, I feel people, you, man. I not totally to get me wrong. You. you know, like it's just you know, I I felt it's time to you know start working for myself and start doing things that I like, and you know yeah. to get back to to uh, to distilling. So I was thinking, you know, for a long time, like you know, what could I do? It's like I I had no idea. I always liked you know. You know, uh, the distilling part, you know, when autumn comes and we do this uh, in, in the countryside. And as my childhood dream was to become a pilot uh, and or to be, you know, if I wouldn't pass out, to be in, in, in the army, you know, in the, in, in the aviation, you know, in the Air Force. And, uh, so, and at that time, it was Yugos still Yugoslavia. And then the war came and everything. And, you know, just, you know, just in the air, just, yeah, uh, right. No, no dream anymore. You know, the war started, and you know, all, all the wars came. And uh, you know, as as a kid who was dreaming about it in his whole childhood, uh, just you know, I, I was just stunned. You know, I didn't know what to do. You know, it's, at, the, at those years, you were just thinking about you know, like you know how how we're gonna get through the war and, and things like that. And uh, after that, I went to law school, and you know, when people ask me why, I said just I don't know. It was easy. <laughs> It was easier to get in, or maybe because I was more in social sciences at that time, and uh, I was, you know, I was always, you know, the like the guy who fights for the rights and things like. But you know, the law is not about that. So no, just, yeah, definitely not about that. So you know, I've, after I've flanked two times, you know, like uh, each each year two times, you know, I was thinking like, you know, this doesn't make so much sense, you know, so. You know, then I got you know I got a job in the uh, in the IT industry and uh, slowly worked my way up a bit. And but you know it was fun. I like you know I, I like IT. I like computers. I like technology. You know I built I built my own website. So uh, you know at least it, it it did some good with that. Uh, but I was never fulfilled. 
I was never completely fulfilled. And with time, some, I don't know, five, six years ago, uh, I, you know, when, when we, I was selling with my father, uh, we were just, I think we were making pear brandy or something. And uh, pear rakia. So, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I could do this for a living. You know, and and as you as you know, the uh, craft distilling movement started some 10, 15 years ago. Uh, of course, here back home, the same as as in New Zealand, uh, home distilling is not forbidden, so it's mm. it's, it's legal, and uh, it it wasn't so hard. You know, it's not hard, so hard to uh, to to open it. To you, okay, there are rules. You have you know, you get to have some uh, permits and things like that, but. It's something I like. I could do. I like doing, and I, I start to get into it in more scientifically and uh, reading more about it. I started going uh, to conferences. Uh, the first great thing that I did was going to London in 2014, 15, I guess. Oh wow! Okay, it was, so you've been on this road for a while now. You've been yeah, yeah, for it was, a while. yeah. Uh, Craft Distilling Expo in London. Which which was a great you know it's 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 a great exhibition. There's so so many uh, uh, so many people in the industry over there. So many uh, master classes, workshops. Uh, met met so many great people over there. Uh, uh, I met Bill Owens from ADI, uh, who helped me so much on, on my journey. You know, uh, he invited me next year to go with with them to uh, to a journey. You know, to a trip to Scotland. So oh, wow. we went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Speyside and went all through like I don't know five or six distilleries, which was wow. You know, going with people which you know I, I told them when I when I met them all. Oh, hey, I have your book. Yeah, I have your book too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and and then going tasting whiskeys and uh, touring the distilleries with them was was amazing. And uh, after that, I got an internship also through ADI. From, uh, from American Distilling Institute, uh, so I got I got placed at uh, Cedar Ridge Distillery in Iowa. Yep. Yeah. Uh, amazing people. So and Jeff and Lori and and Madison, they uh, the same year they visited me back home in Croatia. Also, so so it's it, it, so you know I love making new friends like that, and I spent there almost a month in the states. And, yeah. It was a month, around a month, uh, two and a half weeks at Cedar Ridge, and uh, one more week, week, week and a half uh, traveling. I was for a week in California, uh, nice. you know, hanging around with Bill and Christy from ADI, and um, visiting distilleries over there. Uh, I worked one day uh, at uh, Spirit Works Distillery. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're amazing people, also. Lauren is, uh, is, is is such a great distiller. Uh, so many things you can learn from her. So you know, uh, it's a great experience. You know, and things were just upgrading, upgrading. You know, all the time, and just meeting meeting new people. Things are moving forward, and everything is setting up right. You know, like just just you know connecting the dots, and and you know you, you get that feeling. You know, I, I really. You know, I really have to do this because yeah, I really do this. I love doing it. So you know. I hope, hopefully, till the end of this year, we're gonna we're gonna uh, have the distillery up and running. So, so right now, before we do anything else, I need you to tell everyone the name of the distillery, and I need you to give everyone the name of the website because we we almost got there before and then we forgot it. So, do oh, yeah. it now before uh, we forget again. The distillery is it's name okay. The company Capella Distilling Company. It's K A P E L A Distilling Company. Capella is the name of the mountain. Uh, which is very close to uh, to that village where my father is from, so it's more it's something like of a, you know traditional name for me. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you have to be authentic. You know, you, you, I think it's important in every business, especially in this business, uh, uh, to recognize you know your roots, your tradition, especially if you're making traditional drinks. So, let's say. Uh, in this in this way, you know, we're showing you know who we are, where we are from. Mm. My friend, my my best friend, veteran, and I, uh, he, you know, we are partners in this, and uh, we're best friends since childhood. And uh, for the last twenty five years, he was living in, in the states. For the last twenty years, he was living in New York, and he came back, and uh, you know, we're we're starting the distillery together. 
That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Website. What's the website? Uh, website, uh, coupleofdistilling.com. Easy. All right, guys. So make sure you go and check it out. Uh, you're not up and running yet, but you're hoping to be yeah. in to production the by year. the end of yeah. the year. Yeah. 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 Okay. Obviously, current events around the world may yeah. change that one way or the other. I mean, who knows right now, right? But, they already had, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. All right, so let's let's take it all the way back to the start, man. And I I have to imagine that if we're talking about rakia, if we're talking about brandy, you have to start with fruit, right? That this oh, has to be the place that we start talking. Definitely. So, what what is what are you looking for in a fruit? Not necessarily, you know, like a specific. Oh, you need plum, but you know. So, if we are talking plums, what about the plum are you looking for? that makes so, a good brandy you have to okay it, it depends on the part of the world there are so many different sorts of plums uh, over here uh, back home in the balkans area especially in former yugoslavia we have we have this uh, sort of an old heirloom variety of plum uh in croatia and part of the bosnia they call it bistrica and in in other part of bosnia in serbia they call it požegača it's just a different name but it's one of the best plums in general, uh, one of the best varieties in the world. As, as, in, in my opinion, and mostly in the opinion of all, all, the, all the people from, uh, from this area, uh, one of the best plums from, for, uh, for rakia, for fruit brandy. So what, what, um, what aspects of that plum make it good? Is it, I, is it like a tasty eating plum as well? Oh, yeah, or is it's, it... it's very tasty. Uh, there is there is this professor on in the uh, University of Agronomy in Belgrade, uh, Professor Nikicevic, and uh, he's he, I think he's the only guy in the world who has PhD in plum brandy. Oh well, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, but I'm gonna show you something. Just say I got his book. Oh nice. So, yeah. So this is like a, you know how many pages? Check this out. You. Yeah, it looks 1, like 1,400 and something. The, book, <laughs> the alcohol Bible. Uh, I hope this would be translated uh, to English one day because it's such an amazing manual for, for making, especially for making fruit brandies. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, you, you can learn from him and from other people in the, from the, uh, from the industry uh, over here about, about fruit brandy. And, Mostly in this book, they are named uh, local varieties. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. You heard about Stanley Plum? It's uh, I, I, I know the name, but I know nothing yeah, yeah, about okay. it. Like it I, I think yeah. it's it, it, it's it's world, uh, a spread plum. Uh, Stanley Plum is good for for spreads. You know, it's 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 good for eating, but it doesn't uh, give such good aroma to uh, to brandies. It doesn't translate into 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 fruit spirits, and this plum of ours, uh, the local plum, uh, one of the one of the local plums, uh, local varieties, you know, they give amazing uh, mm. uh, aromas in, in in brandies. Okay, it all depends in the process then with of the course yeast, yeah. with the fermentation with the uh, so, so 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 many variables. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to say. The prof this professor Nikitsch, what he says in his book, and you can see it in his videos. Some uh, uh, he made a few videos uh, when he, you know, he's, he's guested some shows and things like that. Uh, he says when the plum is easily separated from the stone, when the meat, ah, okay, how do you call it? But it's easily separated from the stone. That this this is this one is suitable for for uh, for rakia for fruit brandies, and the one so that. So if it's less ripe than that, it doesn't have enough sugar. I'm assuming that's the problem. I, would, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I have to okay. read more about it. You know, I, 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 I admit, uh, you know, openly, I'm just. Oh, there's too many things to know. Everything, man. <laughs> you don't need to explain to me. And yeah. I, I don't think I'm even uh, ready yet to read this whole book because there's so much chemistry inside, and I sucked at chemistry in high school. <laughs> Yeah, I almost flunked chemistry before graduation uh, because <laughs> so that I, you know, I just did, didn't feel like learning it. Just it wasn't interesting at that time to me, you know. And uh, I had, I don't know, I had a 
we have uh, grades here from five to one as five is the best and one you know with one you flank so i had the five from philosophy history and things like that social sciences because at that time i was interested in that you know and i, I get a bit weird sometimes if i'm interested in something you know i will learn everything about it if i'm not yeah. interested you know zilch nothing yeah. so it's just, i'm not I can interested. tell that I can tell that by looking at all the books over your shoulder <laughs> on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. so, so for for the fruit, if you are you looking for something that is just sweet, or do you need it to be a little bit tart? Like, do you need some acid in it still? Yeah, like, you need acid. You need okay. acid. For example, if you make from what I've uh, from my experience, uh, apples. Let's talk mm -hmm. about. Apples. Apples that are more, they have more acids. They, you know, I get from them so much nicer, uh, more aromatic uh, yeah. for brandy. So of course, because acids, you know, from acids you get the aromas. Uh, from 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 uh, sugar, you you just get the volume. If you want, you want the perfect combination of that. And, yeah, you uh, need enough sugar to create enough alcohol. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want to be leaving alcohol behind. Oh yeah, so, I mean, yeah. I, the something I've been I've been wanting to ask you from the moment I knew we were going to do this was I, I talked to a guy called Elias uh, on one of these podcasts. I can't remember what number it was. Sorry, guys. It's uh, Elias on Brandy on Great Brandy, and he. I know it's really hard to put these things into generalizations, like when you're talking years of experience yeah. and just being able to pick up a piece of fruit and smell it or taste it and say it's ready or not ready. I, I get that, but something that he said is that. If grapes get too sweet and they don't have enough acidity, then the the brandy is kind of flabby. It just tastes like old cooked stewed yeah. fruit that doesn't have any. Um, it doesn't. It's not fresh. It doesn't remind you of the fresh fruit. It reminds you of a kind of a, like a, just a flabby version of it. Yeah. Whereas absolutely. if you get that same grape earlier when it's uh, when it has some acidity, some tartness to it, still, yeah, the the same thing. So it sounds like that. That general rule is going to apply to most fruit, would you say? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Whatever yeah. you're doing. Yeah, definitely. And that's why it's important uh, uh, to um, know which variety of, of the right. fruit, each fruit you're using. You know. So, for example, there is a usually the rule of thumb is pick your fruits when they're ripe. Don't leave them too too long. You know. Don't pick them too early. Just pick them when they're ripe. But if you're working with Williams pear or in the states they call it Bartlett pear. Uh, the recommendation, of, you know, in the uh, in the industry of people who are working, you know, working for for years with that, that's to pick it, you know, some two weeks earlier. Before, uh, okay. Uh, be, yeah, the Williams pear before it's before it's ripe. Uh, so the starch uh, before the starch, there's, there's still a lot of starch in the uh, in the fruit, and so it, it would convert, you know, while you know the, the fruit is. Resting, I don't know how to how they say it, to say it in English while it's waiting for for the process to be processed. Yeah, yeah. So it it, it could you know like um, on it on its own you know to uh, to to create these sugars from starch. So and the, the Williams pear is very very specific. Uh, it gives such a nice delicate subtle aroma. It's it's different from so many from so many other pears. Uh, so you have to. You have to be careful when you're when you're making it uh, in the whole process, even even more than with other fruits. So to, <clears throat> to sorry to get that uh, nice delicate uh, Williams pear aroma. I I just had a thought, and I don't know. I'm going to run this past you. Tell me if you think I'm completely crazy. But quite often I hear people saying that the best the best fruit that you can get, whether you're talking about pears or apples or grapes or whatever, is more often than not a old variety, an heirloom variety. And I've just realized that the the main difference between any heirloom variety of fruit and the new one, like let's talk apples, for example, right? Any apple that's being sold in the supermarket, what do people want from it? They want it to be big, they want it to be red, and they want it to be really, really sweet. They don't they don't want it to be tart. <laughs> they don't want it to be acidic. Yeah. Like, do you think that the reason that heirloom varieties work for brandy is just because they haven't been bred to be crazy sweet? Uh, like, am I crazy thinking that? <laughs> no, not at all. 
Not at all, because, you know, I don't know, the people have, you know, is it widespread to have uh, your own gardens and grow all varieties of vegetables and fruits, all varieties at New in New Zealand? Uh, for like, for my parents' generation, it was kind of common. For my grandparents' generation, very common. But it's very quickly disappearing now. Really quickly disappearing. Okay. Yeah. Over here, it's coming back because... I, I must say it's happening here too. Yeah. It is coming back. Yeah, that's a good point. People like to grow their own food, some just for the fun of it. And But uh, one of the reasons is like people all, all, all the time say, do you remember how the tomatoes used to taste like? <laughs> yeah. you, you remember like how, how uh, I don't know, old uh, grandma's apples tasted like? Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of truth in what you're saying because the, with all these new hybrids, uh, you lose, uh, you get, you get uh, yield, you get the looks, you know, visually, visually attractive fruit and vegetables, but you don't, you don't get, you, you lose uh, some of those uh, significant aromas that would, you know, that you t taste when you're eating them, and they would, they, they also translate into the spirits. Mm. I was watching this uh, documentary about uh, seeds, you know, about big big pharma companies. Uh, I mean, those in in in, agri in agriculture especially. Mm. So uh, they are just producing, you know, genetically modifying seeds, working on hybrids, just you know, to get the bigger yield and you know. Uh, but when they did the research on um, a chemical analysis of these of the fruits. Later on, you know, these vegetables, uh, all heirloom varieties had like uh, seventy percent more. Uh, how do you, how would you say it in English? Like uh, good ingredients inside, you know, like you know, like minerals, vitamins, oh, and yeah. things like and things like that. Nutrients in general, yeah. New, yeah, nutrients. Sorry, I, I, I forgot. You know, sometimes sometimes just words slip. It all happens to me. Sometimes when when I speak Croatian, I cannot remember words in Croatian because I, I speak English a lot, and then you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't comment, man. I speak one language, so any yeah. any issue anyone ever has speaking more than one language, I got to step out. Uh, on I, I got, I, I've, got, I've got four in my head, so it's it's, it's oh not, wow, it, it's interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what I want to say, so I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to say like a, like a disclaimer now. I'm not an expert in this, but from what I experienced, uh, all varieties. Uh, are so much tasteful. They have so much more aroma. Uh, so, like when you when you take that fruit, you know, from from the tree with, with from the old variety, and when it's ripe, even uh, even you know weeks before that, we usually as kids we were usually all all the time eating green fruit because <laughs> we, we couldn't wait for them to ripe, you know. And uh, you just feel a huge difference. So, you know, it, that translates into this stuff because distillation is it's practically, you know, getting the essence out of, out, out of the fruit. So Quite literally. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I definitely, definitely, I think it is. But with, with fruits, you have, you have another problem. You have, um, it's the most um, expensive to make a good fruit yeah. branding. And it, you, you get, if you're selling it, you get you don't get the same value as you would get for whiskey or for cognac or for you know uh, even uh, craft jeans these days just because of the branding and marketing. So. It's a perception thing, and I do think I, I have a feeling that as this resurgence of respect for uh, place for terroir, for want of a better word, for people doing their own stuff you know like literally farm to plate sort of yeah. food and beverage type idea all of those things that sort of roll into the the uh the non-wanky side of craft mm -hmm. whatever it happens to be i don't know man i i could see there being a resurgence for fruit products because it seems to fit that narrative i i yeah i i've seen the same thing here man it's really hard to even find fruit products on the shelves in a liquor store you know let alone find something that's not made by 
it'll be like a couple of random things from Diageo or something, which is the last yeah. thing I want when it comes to a fruit brand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's economically viable for big distilleries. Yeah, yeah, industry, it's really but, not. You know, yeah. for fruits, for, uh, brand is you know wine from which we make get from wine. Brand is yeah because they already they already have a name for them. So starting yeah. with cognac, armagnac, and things like that, uh, brand is all over the world. Uh, so I think we haven't worked enough, and this area where we live, uh, it's it was never too popular in the world. You know, uh, the Balkans. You know, some, sometimes sometimes I feel that you know, people around the world think of us from the Balkans as some savages going around in rags. You know, just fighting each day and things <laughs> like that. Just, the thing is, people over here are very passionate about everything they do, and uh, so you know, sometimes you know, through history, things get heated up. You know, so but yeah, right. You can see in sports, you know, the, 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 the uh, sportsmen from whole former Yugoslavia, from Croatia, from Serbia, Slovenia, Bosnia, they're very successful, su successful people. You know, uh, football, basketball, tennis, uh, you know, all sorts of sports because people are very passionate. You know, when they get heated up about something, you know, they will go, you know, all the way till the end, just just to be the best, just to work on 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 things, you know, like to to create something special, you know. So, in 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 a way, you you can compare us, like you know, to um, <clears throat> how do you call it, like like nations, like Latin nations, like it, yeah. Italians, Spanish, Portuguese. You know, they're also passionate about they, about things. So you know, we are we are the same. We just you know just different you know different area of the world. Mm. I do. I, I think you're right too. I think there's a marketing issue with the product, yeah, and I don't mean marketing like on an individual basis. No, no. I mean it's as right. a as it's an right. industry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, the only way, the only way that that can change is people like you doing things like this, right? You yeah. know, talking about it, sort of. Um, <laughs> I want to use the word evangelize. I've been talking to Roy from Aqua Vitae, and he uses that word. Uh, with oh, I, I, I saw the podcast. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> with yeah. with no connection whatsoever to religion, he just means it in the fact that you're so passionate about something that you want to tell someone else about it, and you want them to understand what's so oh, yeah. awesome about yeah. the thing is. And there's real, there's not a better word for that, right? Evangelizes the, the no, word. no. I mean, this this is a term that he, that he used. Mm. I, I mean, at least in English language. Uh, if if I would say it in Croatian, it would sound weird. So, <laughs> uh, so, so the fruit. Um, let's run through a few different, uh, I guess, species would be the right word of fruit that that works well. So we, we've covered plums, pears, apples. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you think is? Oh yeah. What There's, What else? What are, What other things should people be looking at? To yeah. Uh, this is such a wonderful. Uh, area of distilling for for people who want to uh, create special things. Uh, for example, quince. Ooh, okay, I could see that. Quince, amazing fruit brandy, amazing. Mm. Just with the quince, uh, it's very delicate to work with, as with fruit. You know, it gets it gets spoiled very easily if you hit it. For example, you know, when when handling quince. Oh, uh, I see what you, you mean. You know, you, you get you get those. Uh, brown black marks on it. it, it you know, it gets it starts to rot very fast, so you have to be very careful with it. And the thing is, there is no, there's not so much uh, there's not so much sugar in it as, for example, as in some pears or especially plums. Cherries have a lot of sugar, for example. Uh, huh. So with twins, you would get you would need, let's say, some average. Uh, 100 kilos for four or five liters of, oh, wow. of fruit brandy at 40, 40 something percent. So, but it's very delicate. It's uh, aroma is very nice. It has, depending on also on the variety of queens, uh, you get this on the nose, you get this uh, combination of, of honey and fruit and um, spring kind of aromas so like when you walk in, in, in you know when you go to, to a meadow in, in, in spring and all those flowers start start to grow and you get mm. a bit of earthy feel, uh, earthy aromas on you know on the nose and of all those um, 
floral aromas, floral scents, and you, yeah. you mix that with honey, and um, you know, and this is this is the aroma you get from quince, and you know, and when you know, it's it's also very subtle when you drink it. Uh, so it's a very it's a very delicate. It's it's practically it's it's a delicacy among uh, fruit brandies. Then you also have um, apricot. Uh, they uh, they make a lot of apricot brandy in Hungary and in Serbia. <coughs> Excuse me. I have to imagine that all stone fruit would work relatively well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peach, yeah. nectarine, plum, yeah. obviously. Peach, uh, <laughs> what was the this? I was when I was exploring. Uh, I was, there were, there's a distillery in Colorado in in the states. They make a lot of peach brandy. Oh man, I'm sorry, guys. I just cannot remember the name now. <laughs> That's uh, okay. They have a great branding, also. Uh, so, like, okay, my apologies. I forgot the name. Um, it'll, it'll. We, we, we've got plenty of time left. It'll come back to you. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, apricot quince. Um, what, what about? I, so, all of those, all of the stone fruit. That makes sense to me, right? Because you've got this. <laughs> You've got a very aromatic thing with a little bit of sugar, but it's not starchy and um, mushy. And it is also, it, it has that bite to it. It has a, a, okay. a aspect of acidity and sharpness to all of those fruits, right? Mm -hmm. So that just makes sense to me. What about doing something, like have you done any, like what about banana or melon? I or... haven't tried it. Okay, we, I mean, when you look at banana, but... Banana has a, like I, I almost said, uh, words that you don't say in public, okay? <laughs> it has a lot of sugar. Yeah. Bananas have a lot of sugar, but I never worked with, you know, I might even try, you know, like, you know get, get like a 50 kilos of bananas and uh, mesh <laughs> up and just, just see what, what I'm going to get because I have this uh, lab steel, like six, six liters steel from the, from ice steel and it, it works great. So, uh, you know, it's great for, for, for testing purposes. Um, so, the, I, I mean, the, the beauty of all of this is that it doesn't matter where you live in the world. There's some sort of local fruit yeah, there's, there's some, for the there's, most part, right? You know, unless yeah. you're in the Arctic Circle or something crazy. But, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, maybe it's, like, even dates, you know. There's, there's, yeah, why not? Why when not? you're in the they, middle of the desert, there's they, some they, sort of fruit. Yeah. yeah. You get you get the great brandy from figs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, but, I have but, tried that. But from dry figs. So you dry figs, you know, when they're completely dry, and you got just just like a, when you look at them, it's just a whole big big pile of fruit sugar, you know. And then you just you know mash them, add water, add um, yeast, and uh, when it when it's fermented, then you distill it. It gives it gives an amazing brandy. So, but you also need you know. It's, it's a process. So. Yeah. So, I mean, that. let's talk about that now. What is the, is there a general rule of thumb to get from, let's get from the fruit is on the tree or, you know, on the vine or whatever it happens to be. How do you get from that point through to it's in your fermenter? You know, what, is there a general rule of thumb in terms of cutting it, mashing it, mixing it with water? You know, I, I know... I know your ideas on adding sugar, so let's talk about that too. No um, sugar, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's a, it's a no go for me. So yeah. <laughs> I, I want you know I want the right stuff, uh, the real essence of the fruit that I that I get. So it's, it's just um, you start the business to make money, but you also you want to make the, the good, good the good thing, you know, especially yeah. you know. Our idea now is like you know, bring bring the good stuff to the table. If I don't want to drink it, I don't want to sell it to anybody. So I don't know how it's going to be down the road. For example, you know, like a miracle happens and we grow to a grow to a huge company and we you know hire a manager and uh, like we just retire and go to Bahamas or something. Like I don't know how it's going to work then. Okay, but it's it's, it's a long, long way down the line. So, but yeah. okay, let's get serious. Uh, I don't I don't like to put sugar in it because I don't, to me it's cheating. You just you just get more alcohol to me it's cheating um 
And it's more yeah. alcohol with the same amount of flavor, right? Yeah. Like it, yeah. you're not getting yeah. so more flavor. Fact, you, you, you dilute the flavor. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you pick the fruit. You know, you have to, you, you, what we mentioned before, it has to be ripe. The thing that people all, uh, mo most, a lot of people do this, uh, they uh, use all the fruits that are not so good. You know, it, they're a bit, you know, they're gone bad or they have some growth on them. Like, you know, I don't know how they call it how do you call them but you know those white stuff and think you know you just throw all that away because it's going it's going to go bad in fermentation it's all the all the bacteria all in there from from that uh, from from there are going to ruin your mash your fruit mash so you you mash it you you know you put it to the grinder you separate as as much as you can especially the stone fruits you separate the stones uh you sep you, you separate the uh, how do you call it the wooden part the petals you no know? Yeah, uh, the, oh, the, the stems, the stems, from the yeah, top. yeah, 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 the stems, the leaves, everything you know. So that that just you know that just uh, uh, ruins the flavor because you know that, that's that's a wooden part and you get methanol from that, and during the fermentation it's gonna also affect uh, the flavor. So you want to get it as as clean as you can. Uh, so when it's mashed, so when you have like this thick mash of fruit, uh, you can add uh, pectolytic enzymes. So you, you add pectin when you make uh, spreads, gems. So you want it to gelatinize even more. Here it's here is the opposite. You want to break those uh, bonds. So you want uh, this thick mash to, to become more uh, flu fluid, more watery. So it's, it's yeah. going to be... Uh, easier for uh, yeast to access uh, you know, to access the sugars in fruit, uh, and uh, it's going to be much easier for you to distill. So you you put it after after that uh, after a couple of hours, let's say five six hours, yeah, you add yeast, you close it up, and you oh, sorry, are you, are you adding water? Or are you literally just using the fruit? Just I just just using the fruit. You okay, can so add, no water as well. Yeah, okay, it wow. depends on the fruit. Depends on the fruit. Right. For, for example, when I do when I work with plums, I I don't don't add water, but right. when I when I when I work with the uh, with apples or pears, I add some water because it's too it's it's too dry. You you know just you, you just you 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 feel the uh, the vessel where you put you know, the fruit in, you, know, you fill it to the top, and you add water just you know till it comes to the top to uh, to to cover it. So, but you you right. have to you know you have to be sure that it's all full with fr with, fr uh, with fruit first. So you're you're essentially looking for you're going to end up with a whole lot of solids in there, obviously. Yeah. You know, like well, yeah. very small particulate or mashed up solids, but you want yeah. enough liquid to completely immerse that. So it's a you want a slurry, not bits of fruit kind of thing. Yeah. Like if you if you, you want to be able to stir it is what I'm saying. You want to yeah, the best thing is would would, would be uh, to, to have to have the fruit juice. For example, uh, you you press all the fruit, you get all the juice out, you put that juice and then you add those solids also. And uh, and you put yeast in that. And right. I think I think that would be the the best. Uh, I did it once. I did it once with the uh, with, with apples so uh it, it works really well but it's it's more work you know it's, yeah. it's two, two separate processes so, so you have to you have to press the fruit to get the juice and then you get have to get the solids back in and uh it's, it's twice work as just you know compared to just grinding it meshing it you know just uh, into one yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. mass so yeah. then you add you add uh yeast uh, yeast of, of your choice. Uh, Let's talk yeast, man. This is a you know this is another huge. You can go oh, down yeah. all sorts of roads here. Um, I the, the people that are going to listen to this are probably more likely going to be very serious about what they're doing. If not, they're thinking about you know potentially doing mm -hmm. this professionally in their distillery or starting a distillery to do this. So I think we're going to talk about pitching yeast, right? I mean, okay. sure, you you could potentially make a living off wild yeast, but to me, that's just a little bit. It's risky. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never know. It's like, it's like you know, like you've seen Forrest Gump. You know, like yeah, <laughs> life, life is like a box of chocolate. <laughs> Dude, the last guy I talked to about 
wild yeast said exactly that, like literally use that analogy. Wild yeah. yeast is like a box of chocolates. Yeah. Great okay, so, so we can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great minds think alike or fools never differ. I can never yeah. tell the difference between the two. <laughs> so I, let's shelf the wild yeast thing because, okay. you know, like that's a whole other kettle of fish. So if we're going to use a commercial pitch of yeast, what are you looking for? Are you looking for something relatively neutral that's just going to sort of get out of the way and let the fruit do the talking? Or are you seeing this as another another step, another way to add more complexity and flavor to the to the final product? I experiment all the time. As a, as a home distiller, I experiment all the time. So what I usually like, I like yeasts that don't have a killer factor. So, you know, they, you know, they will, they will, do their own thing, but they will allow wild yeast also to, you know, to pitch in. So, right. so yeah. you want it to sour a little. You want some yeah, more acidity get, from fermentation. A terror or something. How, how, yeah. how would you call it? So it, it is a bit risky, but, you know, you you had enough of, of uh, the yeast you selected and uh, it will start, you know, doing that and doing that thing. Uh, so the wild yeast, you know, won't have so much uh inf influence but it will have a little influence on it uh, on, on the whole aroma of the of the fruit of you know of the mesh later on yeah but you know you can my uh my advice you, be, yeah oh no i was just gonna say do you have a go-to yeast like you uh, know is, is there a certain you said you use wine yeast a lot and i'm assuming yeast. that's Wait, let, because let's, it's used let's to just check on the what's what's the name of that yeast just just sec yeah, no problem. So, I mean, different it's from Palepan, yeah, uh, it's Lalvin EC one 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 eight. I had I had pretty good results with that yeast, especially with plums. Yep. And does that add something specific to the to um, the final product? You, you get you get more more esters, you get more fruit aromas. So it it really uh, pulls out those fruity aromas. What what you want from that fruit? Uh, but uh, in in my experience, you know, yeah. this this is this and that is, might this just my my, my my personal view of things. I'm not I'm not a chemist or you know just it's just yeah. what I got uh, good results from. I haven't worked uh, with uh, specialized distillers uh, fruit uh, distillers yeast you know for for uh, for fruits. Uh, they also have it in Lalman and they they have it in in soft spirit. Uh, I haven't used it yet. I have to try it. Uh, I was reluctant, mostly because wine yeasts work worked very well so far, and uh, you know, it's just try the yeast. Let's say you like you like some wine, you like some the taste of some wine, uh, especially I don't know Pinot Noir or Cabernet or whatever. So try that yeast that they use for that for for that kind of wine or for some you know. Uh, Try it with, with, with the fruit that you want. See what you're going to get. So uh, there is no rule of thumb for me. The, uh, I, I didn't find out what the industry you, uh, uses mostly because it's all uh, small manufacturers over here uh, in, this, in this whole area. There are a few big ones, but you know you, it's, hard, it, it's very hard to get information from them. And right. uh, sometimes, even when you get the info from them, you 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 get surprised with the uh, uh, with, with some things how they, how they do things. You know, some a lot of times I got you know surprised negatively. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you know how it's with home distillers and craft distillers. We're all about the detail. Yeah, yeah. we all, we all, we all want to make it perfect. We want to perfect our skill, our our product, and uh, you know. So, a good part of uh, the industry just you know just works for profit. So I'm not saying they're doing bad things. You have amazing. This is like when you talk about the definition of craft. You have amazing big, huge distilleries that they have, they, they make amazing product. It's not about just you know like you know they are big. They make lousy stuff. No, no, that's mind. They have great equipment. They have access to the best. Uh, raw materials, you know, they have best experts working for them. You know, they can make amazing drinks. It's just not it's about if you're big or small, it's just no. how good you're at it. 
No, it's about mindset. It's about the experience you've got, the the skill you've got. And I think you touched on it already, right? It's about what your reason for being in business is. If your yep. reason in business is just to, you know, get rich quick. Well, for one, you're in the wrong damn business. Find another job. <laughs> distilling's not distilling's yep. not your answer, my friend. Um, you know, but but you're going to go about things differently, right? You would be adding adding sugar in to your mashes to stretch it further, mm. you know? So yeah, there, there's a thing there. I, I also think it's very interesting to talk about this with someone. I didn't know that it was legal for you to distill at home. Yeah, 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 it is. And this is the beauty of being able to distill at home, right? You've been able to hone your craft. You've been able to chase that craft down to a point where you you're on a level that you can take your spirits you know, and, and be insanely proud of them. Imagine if you wanted, if your dream was to own a distillery, but it was illegal for you to run a still in the backyard. No, oh, yeah. Like, I understand. It's, I, mean, I understand, but I don't understand. It's like, I, you know, because it's all, the, all, all the time it was legal, legal for us over here, you know, the same as for you in New Zealand. And uh, it's just, you know, like, how come I cannot do that? But when I was in the States, when I was traveling and working over there, and it's just it's a big thing you know since prohibition and you're like just don't do that you end up in jail and to us yeah. it's it's something that it's it's part of the tradition it's just a way of life right just, yeah yeah exactly the way of life yeah yeah it's crazy man i i do hope it is something that changes and opens up because in my opinion it's doing nothing but hold the industry back like imagine if there was if everyone out there that was interested in this could just mess around in their backyard and could try every yeast on the face mm -hmm. of the planet collectively, you know, uh, you just the, the information yeah. that those people find, you know, that the individual isn't important in that scenario. It's the, exactly. it's the hive this, this, mind. Yeah. These people expand the knowledge database. Yep. I mean, yep. and they push boundaries yeah. like you can. So you've got this little six liter still, right? Yeah. Even as a, even as a, as a business, You've got to pay someone to operate it. You've got to pay for all the stuff that goes into it. You've got to like buy the equipment to start with. Even though it's a small scale, you're still losing money on that batch. Whereas a home distiller, yeah, sure, I'm spending money on it, but it's a yeah. hobby. That's what hobbies do, oh, yeah. you know? So if I end up throwing, you know, 10 liters of mash down the, down the sink or down the toilet, what does it matter? You know, I learned something from it. I move on to something else. Exactly. But it's, it's but as a commercial distillery, you you know, oh yeah, you should do that. But it's it's a little bit hard to justify it. You know. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah. economically viable. No. Yeah. Not yeah. to be doing it all the time. Anyway, all right. I've sidetracked us drastically. So back to the um, the fermentation. I I watched the video that you recorded with Jeff multiple times, actually. I think I've seen it about four times now. And one of the things that you said, and that was interesting to me, in that you prefer a cooler, slower fermentation compared to, you know, guys that are fermenting at 30 degrees Celsius or something crazy for for whiskey. Do you want to walk yep. us through the thinking there and, and why you choose that? What I noticed that uh, in this, when I, when I get, you know, when it's cooler fermentation, a bit longer fermentation i get more uh i get more uh, i get more aromatic uh mash and then it's just 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 a personal opinion so it's so you it's, retain more of what the fruit is already giving or you think the yeast is adding something to it it's hard to say it's hard to say yeah. but i i keep it it to me it seems that it keeps uh more of the original fruit aroma uh, but then again, it I, it also depends on yeast. Uh, lately, I, I have watched this se series of video from Odin from Istil, and uh, he has on on his web page uh, like Istil University online. I, I don't remember exact, exactly, and he talks about yeasts, and he mentions there uh, a lot of things about you know how yeasts work and uh, you know like. Pushing the yeast to their, you know, to their limits and to their boundaries, you know how how it will be, re how it will react, you know, and that also gives me now another perspective on, on things, you know, because we usually people as, as people we usually can be stu stubborn with our knowledge, you know, like if we learn to do something, 
one way. Yeah, it's working only in that way. It's gonna, you know, it's just, it, it doesn't work any other way. It, it showed me right so so many times before, you know, like, and I'm gonna keep doing it. The same like when I talked to my father when I was starting to, you know, this thing by myself like years ago, and like, you know, what do you know? I'm doing this for 30 years. You yeah. Know, just, <laughs> and you know, like, uh, but you know, he's 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 a very uh, reasonable guy. So you know, when he saw, you know. That I'm making improvements and I like doing it, so you know, he just you know let me. He, I'm doing all everything now. It's just he just relaxes. <laughs> and uh, what I wanted to say about you know the, so all this uh, talks about yeast, you know, like how yeast function on different temperatures. What what kind of yeast uh, f uh, functions or on, on what kind of temperature? Like when you push it to the edge, like uh, what do you get from it? So uh, I suggest everybody you know look at that video. So you know, I'm, I'm gonna take some things from there, and I'm gonna try this year with uh, with different kind of yeasts and on different kind of temperatures. So uh, so far, when you, you know when I talked about fermentation and in that video, to me, uh, in my experience, in my experience, like around 20 degrees uh, fermentation on 20 degrees, some four to five weeks, it it, uh, it worked very very well. Uh, but it was mostly this year that I mentioned Lalvin's EC1118 uh, wine yeast. Uh, I used it, uh, but you know, I'm gonna with all this new information, I'm gonna try you know, different approach with different batches of, of, of fruit. So, uh, as I said, you know, it's um, depends on yeast. You don't, you can okay, when you're doing home this thing, you cannot, you don't always get controlled uh, fermentation. You cannot control the temperature all the time, especially if you put it in a, like a, um, IBC or uh, some HDP uh, vessel or whatever you have. So you know you don't, you cannot even close it. Just put nylon on it, close it some, somehow because you know it's the, not to get uh, other uh, wild yeasts in it and for the ethanol not to evaporate. I mean, uh, you have to try things. Uh, okay, now when I'm when I'm thinking about the business part of you know of, of the equation, uh, you just have to get to you know stick to a certain process that uh, gives you the best uh, um, of both worlds. You know, like you get the, the good yield and you get good aromas. As a home distiller, and speed, <laughs> and speed, yeah, yeah. Because... You don't want stuff sitting around in the fermenter for months if you can get <laughs> get away with it exactly. on the commercial side. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you, you get you have whiskey in for you know, whiskey mash in fermenters for like three, four to seven days. Yeah, yeah. Usually, and uh, with fruit, you know, those fermenters are used for a month. Okay, yeah. depends on temperature. Okay, if it's, it's if it's hot, if you if you ferment it around thirty degrees, you can be done in ten days. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's just uh, it's uh, there's a lot of variables in it. Uh, type of yeast, type of fruit, uh, temperature, uh, variety of the same fruit. And so, like you say too, this this is what's working for you where you are with the fruit that you're using, yeah, yeah. and you're not claiming that the way you do it is going to work best for everyone you're just saying that you know that that gives you a consistent result and i respect that man that's that's yeah. the only you know, thing you can claim right like, you know like at, at this moment with with this set of skills and knowledge i i i have i i think i'm doing good thing but maybe in like in, 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 in a year from now it's gonna, it's gonna <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you know, totally you have to upgrade yourself all the time and and work on it so listen to other people you know read educate yourself yeah, totally. All right, so let's move on to the, the distillation. So the, the biggest thing here that strikes me straight away is that you're going to have to distill on the solids. You're not going to be able to separate it out into a a liquid that is uh, clear and, you know, th like a thin, watery liquid, which means you're not going to be able to use naked elements in the still. Mm -hmm. uh, even, I'm assuming, direct fire borderline i'm thinking for fruit i don't know so okay depends you know what i mentioned earlier so if you put pectolytic, pectolytic enzyme to break the bonds uh and to, to get it more uh watery 
you can get a, like a fruit juice and you distill fruit juice practically so you don't, you don't have so much solids uh you, you can see like in that video that, that i was uh, when jeff was filming it uh, that uh plum mash was mostly uh su su sour sour plum juice plum yeah. wine how would you call it uh, it tasted pretty pretty well you know <laughs> like like a good uh sour beer and uh, i have an idea about that also so <laughs> <what I'm laughs> um so but Traditionally, uh, it's uh, here at home uh, in, in, in our region. Uh, people are using uh, wood fire stills, classic, you know, classic pot stills, and not all of them have the mixer. How do you call it? The rummager. Uh, you know, you have those, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Agitator, so, I think they normally called. Yeah. So you have this uh, like a row of chains on the bottom, and the mechanism, you know, with the handle outside, you, you turn, and they go uh, on the bottom and you know they mix the mesh and they scrape if if anything gets you know gets stuck uh on the bottom of the steel so uh this is good you know, then it doesn't burn but if you're using uh pot steel without it uh you just have to set the temperature right you know just don't don't uh, make uh too strong fire don't put too much woods you know just just keep it steady it will take a bit longer time, but uh, with just a bit of luck, you won't burn it. Uh, so what what are you going to be doing in a commercial setting? Because I've got to imagine that going wood fire in a commercial no, setting no, is no, a no. bad idea. No, we're going to use it uh, uh, electricity power still with direct heaters. Uh, we uh, we chose ice steel for us. Uh, we're going to order a 500 liter one for the big, for the start. And uh, it has direct fire, uh, oh, sorry, uh, direct uh, heaters, uh, indirect heaters inside. Uh, so, and they, they have some insulation around them, and so they, they don't burn. And plus, it, uh, plus, uh, you know, we, we also chose the agitator for it. So, you know, it also it all the time mixes it. And the good thing oh, about, it, yeah, it, is it a thing? It's essentially like a from memory the the, the ice still is like a giant bay marie right so it's got like a there's a the pot and then there's another pot around the outside it with liquid or oil mm -hmm. around it no 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 no, no. It's, it's no it's just a uh it's a square still uh and the uh, elements are literally in the fruit mesh yeah yeah it's those wow, are inside. how are you not going to scorch it no because they're insulated they're insulated. Oh, okay. yeah and and you have the agitator so okay. you, you also get you know the malar reaction and you 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 know uh, and and the, you have the agitation so it, it it won't scorch it. I mean I even tried on this on the small one which doesn't have the agitator inside. Uh, with it just have that small lab one you know that. Yeah yeah. It was yeah, five six liters or something. Something yeah. Uh, so uh, it it. It worked nicely. I didn't scorch it. It wasn't a very thick mesh, but you know, uh, like a more like a fruit juice, and it worked, worked very nicely. So if if it worked very nicely on the on the small one, with, which doesn't have so so many other options uh, like the big one, you know. So the the thing is why we chose this one is uh, we also uh, very how this um, we want to lower the risk of uh you know we don't want to open fire in the distillery yeah uh, you know it's different in 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 the countryside or in home distilling you have uh there's 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 space you know there's you know it, it, there's, the quantities are not so so big but if you have like a still of you know 500 1000 liters 2000 liters you know there's, there's there's a lot of alcohol over there a lot of alcohol vapors especially if you don't have you know good you know uh system for ventilation, for ventilation yeah so uh plus also it's much easier to work just with electricity you don't need you know you don't need the boiler for steam <laughs> yeah that was yeah. me flipping a switch yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. exactly you know it's uh and both of us weather and i we are uh, <clears throat> uh we like new technologies um uh, and um this is this is the way that we're gonna uh, you know Put together tradition and new technologies. I mean, Nikola Tesla is from the same area where I'm from. It's it's the region of Croatia called Lika, 
and uh, he was born some hundred kilometers away from where I'm from. So you know, he's our guy, and you know, <laughs> because of him, we all have, you know, what we have today. So yeah. uh, I think he 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 will be in for it also. You know, all the time improve on something. You just you just can't stick. You know, because it's I don't know. Talking about copper or something, you know, it's it's still only it's if it's made of copper or if it's distilled this way and the other way. It's in every aspect of life you have to improve, you have to strive for the best, you know, have to you have to explore. This is yeah. how we got, you know, to the state of the world that it is now, you know, from from the old ages. You have to explore. Yeah, I don't. I know. I know nothing about brandy, so I can't comment on it for that. Mm-hmm. I. I mean, you know, if we were talking about whiskey, I. I you know, I think there's probably a pretty solid pushback against that. I think there's personally, I think there's still an advantage in an all copper, you know, an all copper pot still. But you know, I don't know for this. All right, man. So let's let's talk about distillation itself. Mm-hmm. Is there any major difference between running a you know a a whiskey, no, and a brandy? No. So, same process. Same process. And I know uh, from listening to you talk in, in other places that you are 100% on the do it by your senses, smell it, taste it, touch it. Yeah. Um, and that's the best way to make cuts. Question. <laughs> do you see yourself... I, okay, so a little bit, backing up a little bit. For me, I have to do that, right? I have to do it by sense, by touch, by smell, by taste. Because every single thing I ever make is different. <laughs> it doesn't make it doesn't make good YouTube content to make the same thing over and over and over yeah. and over again. But I could see myself if I was using the same ingredients, the same yeast, the same fermentation regimen. You know, if, if everything was standardized and I was trying to create a a more reliable commercial product, I guess I would say. I could see myself relying on numbers more in that situation yeah, do you yeah, think yeah. you would do that more when you start going down a commercial yes. road yes yes absolutely because okay. you, you know, I mean, business wise you cannot function any other way uh it's one thing home distilling and another, another thing is uh working uh like with you know with, uh, having your own distillery making a product for the market uh you have to you have to uh um how to, how to put it um to automize some things you know, to, you know, because you would be spending too much time uh, checking stuff all the time. I mean, I would be doing it as much as it would be needed to, to be done. You know, checking you know the all the all the processes because you know it it it, it is important, but uh, it it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be as much as with home distilling. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, your time's valuable, right? You can be off. Yeah, yeah. You can be sweeping the floor, or you know, what crushing a big pot of fruit, or whatever it can be. What people don't know about having a distillery or a brewery, uh, like seventy or eighty percent of your time is cleaning. Yeah, yeah. It's cleaning. So just, guys, you know, before you want to start a business, before you want uh, to own a distillery or a brewery, uh, just Prepare yourself. You'll be cleaning a lot, a lot. <laughs> That's good advice, man. Real good advice. Yeah, yeah. I yes, and it, and you can still be making the nitty gritty changes, right? It's just that you know, yeah. okay, this is my plum brandy, and I know that if I am doing it this way, generally my head's cut is somewhere between. I, I'm just making numbers up here, dude, but somewhere between 85 and 80 percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you go off and do your shit until you get to 86 percent. And then you go, you know, then you can come back in and check it, make your cut. Yeah. And then yeah. you do the same thing. You go, oh, normally for my tails cut, I'm at whatever, 46%. You know, so you just let it run until you get to 48%. Yeah. yeah. You just need to also get familiar with your still. Yeah. Yeah. So, so don't, uh, when I say this, guys, I'm not saying that as soon as you start a, a commercial distillery, talking to the people listening to this now that I'm saying that you should automatically switch to running by numbers. What I'm saying is that you run the same batch a hundred times in a row. And mm-hmm. okay. It's probably more like 10, 15 times in a row, but in those 10, 15 runs, 
you start to make assumptions about what's going to happen in the next one right Absolutely. So you're Absolutely. not just pulling numbers out of thin air you're no. doing it based on experience First but on consistency yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 you're right you're right um sorry for jumping in um, no, no, no. You go. um you're you're definitely right i mean i worked in in in, in bigger distilleries and uh the process is the same so you know when i when i uh, arrived to uh Cedar ridge when i was uh, operating the big uh big stills and uh first two times you know i was adjusting to the steel the way it works and stuff and later on i was just you know I knew I have, you know, okay, now it's like 215, um, I can leave it, it's, it's, it's set on the temperature, it's it's this, uh, um, the valve for the steam is open this, this much, you know, so I, I guess I have like 20 minutes before before it starts running, and then when it starts running, uh, you know, just I have this much time for that, so you get you automate the process in a way because you get familiar with it it's not like that you're um degrading the the quality of the product you just you just get familiarized with uh, with the equipment that you work with and uh, you know how much time you have for what and what you're going to what you're going to get from uh for from a certain mesh and uh, it's it's just you know it's just the, the the process and the whole routine of work Mm. Because yeah, it's a good way you're, to put it. You're, work, you're doing it day in, day out. You know, when you're home, when you're home distilling or home brewing, you're just like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I feel I'm gonna do something tomorrow, and you know, <laughs> you, yeah. you, you, you mash and you like yeah. you put your, you know, you you put your beer to ferment and you leave it for either a couple of weeks, and then oh yeah, this is good. The kind of I have enough beer now. I'm gonna not not gonna do it in, for two weeks or you know or distillation or whatever when you're when you're doing this uh, you know for, for a living it's much different thing it's it's industry it's uh it's a process yeah so you said right at the back at the beginning when we first started talking to um that even though you drink a lot of your your spirits white you're still quite <laughs> I don't know. I don't even want to use the word aging because that has connotations with it. But I guess resting it or marrying it or you, you're not drinking it right away is my point. So do you want to talk us through that a little bit more? I think there was a little yeah. more detail. Uh, I'll tell you the reason why the, most of it, it's drank uh, as a clear spirit. Because people don't make too much of it and they drink it right away. Uh, okay, right. So, it so that's just the tradition of it, so and that's, that's what the taste just, they've developed. Yes, yes, that's yeah. correct. So, for example, you have uh, an orchard with I don't know, ten, fifteen plums, and you get like certain amount of uh, five hundred kilos of plums. That's around fifty liters of of uh, plum rakia, plum brandy. So, fifty liters. You have you have uh, barrels of 50 liters that are pretty small, but uh, if if they are new, uh, you cannot keep it for for a long time in there because uh, the wood is going to take over the flavor. So, okay, the barrels are a whole other thing, you know, the aging and everything, the whole uh, science about it. So people usually don't have the quantity to age it, to age it. Uh, they usually and legally. To produce legally, you can produce up to 50 liters of, let's say, at 40 percent. So it's 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 20 liters at 100 percent. That's which is okay. theoretically. So per year, per year, yeah. Okay. As 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 a home distiller, everything after that you have to pay uh, the duty. So uh, you can distill more, but you have to. Uh, Go to the customs, and you know you put the paper in with the with the report. I made so much, and you know here is the uh, the proof of payment from, of, of the duty, and and that's it. It's all right. You just you're just not allowed to sell it, but you can make as much as you want as long as you pay duty for it. But then you okay if you if you make three thousand liters, you know they're gonna get a bit suspicious. <laughs> like, yeah, where did that go? Yeah. <laughs> Who drank that? <laughs> yeah, sure. what, are you, what are you gonna do with that? So, yeah. but usually it's around people make up to hundred liters a year. Yeah, so that's that's and that's uh, a lot of fruit, man. A lot that's of a, fruit. That's a, that's a ton of fruit, let's say, in yeah. a, in average. So uh, mostly, uh, then uh, some distilleries 
that are expanding their business and they want to have aged uh, or how do you say rested uh, fruit brandies, uh, then they use that process. And uh, plums and apricots, they do extremely well in barrels. So I have I have tasted, uh, and it's very rare to find old ones because nobody puts it in, you know, nobody nobody ate it. Uh, and uh, I have tried uh, sixteen or eighteen, I think it's wow. a sixteen year old uh, plum brandy. And uh, I'm sorry, whiskey guys, I love whiskey. It's amazing drink, but no whiskey could compare to this. Honestly, and I'm I'm not being now like biased, but this was this was amazing. The, the best. Did it whiskey... have a lot of color at that age? Yeah, like yeah, it was yeah, quite yeah. dark. It was it was it was quite dark. It was um... <laughs> okay. That's a matter. Of time. Gonna... Yeah, <laughs> but it, it was it, getting it... wood influence, is what I'm saying. It yeah, wasn't just yeah. Like... It was, yeah. but not too much. It was, but not but not no, not too much. I was. Um so surprised with the bouquet with the uh with the whole uh how, do, how would i put it with the completeness of, of right of, of, of this drink it was it was amazing it was something similar that i drank that was uh oh one of one of the best whiskeys maybe even the best whiskeys that i ever ever drank was when we were visiting uh knock two distillery and uh we drank uh, we they, they, they took for us to try from a barrel that was wasn't bottled yet it was a 15 or 16 year old that was amazing to me i think that was the best thing and i and i, and I tried some 50 year olds and but uh that uh unknock uh, 15 16 year old straight from the barrel was brilliant one of the best mm. things i have ever tried so uh, and this 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 plum brandy was amazing. This, this was really amazing. So uh, one of the things that I want to want us to do with, in our distillery uh, is to set up uh, part of uh, the uh, uh, production for aging of fruit spirits. So it's not cool. gonna be not gonna be a lot uh, because okay, uh, economically looking, it's you know you make much more money making um, uh, gin and vodka and spirits like that um, but uh, with fruits you know uh, you, you cannot make so much money uh, but if you make a really good one with good branding and everything you, you, you can achieve a good price so mm. with aging it's gonna get it's, it's gonna get a whole other dim dimension yeah. so I'm not I'm not I'm not against it I'm, def I'm definitely for it uh, to try to age it in, in barrels it's just that uh, it's rarely done and uh, uh, you don't have the chance to try spirits uh, like that so, so often. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've got to imagine there's a lot you can learn from the, from the grape brandy world on that side of oh, things because yeah. yeah. the, the tradition yeah. is so much stronger there, isn't it, in terms of, you know, aging on wood. Yeah, yeah. And that some of that stuff's crazy, man. Like the, the people that are blending spirits are not, it's spirit that their great grandfather put down. It's like 40, 50 years old, you know, and they're, they're blending from this vast array of, yeah, it's a totally different world. Yeah. Um, awesome, man. I think, I think we've covered this pretty well from start yeah. to finish. Is there anything that you think that we've missed that's important to the process? Uh, and if not, uh, we'll go, we'll go backstage and I've got a few questions from the Patreons to, to flick to mm -hmm. them, but, um, no, yeah, is there anything else? I, I don't, not, nothing you know crosses my mind at, at the moment. Um, just uh, I think it's that fruit brandies deserve much more love than they get in, in, in the world uh, these days because there are so many varieties of fruits and uh, really premium high-end fruit brandies are amazing spirits. Uh, it's something really special. You know? So here's a question for you it's like you said it's relatively easy to go into pretty much any liquor store worldwide and mm -hmm. find some sort of brandy or grape yeah. grape based distilled product is there a a widely available mass produced fruit brandy that is not horrible that you can recommend so for people like me i've 
I have tried a uh, fig brandy. That was delicious. I had totally forgotten that existed. Uh, other than that, the only, uh, only other brandies. Oh, in uh, Tahiti, some random local who was so drunk he couldn't stand up gave me a bottle, like literally forced it into my mouth. <laughs> and after playing charades with each other, we figured out it was distilled from um, from banana. Uh -huh. uh, other than that, a little bit of grappa and uh, nothing else. So for someone like me that hasn't experienced this world, is, is there a product that you could suggest, you know, that is made by one of the giants that isn't horrible? To wet my whistle and I cannot, know, get, I me, cannot get say, me excited. No, I cannot say that that, that that I've tried from the big Nothing ones. That, yeah, right. But you know, but I'll tell you why. Uh, because mostly, as we make fruit brandies over here, you all the time try this. Uh, you try rakia from somebody else, from neighbor, from guy from another town, from another village, you know, from from another country. You, you try a, a Bosnian one, a Serbia one, a Slovenian one, a Romanian one. You know, like. And they all, and you're all, we are also surrounded here with all sorts of home distilled fruit brandies, and some you know people don't even buy so much because everybody's making it at home. And yeah, you, right. And there's so, so much around, going around it, and everybody, I think everybody has at home has a, at least four or five bottles of different you know different types of of, of rakia of you know schnapps, fruit brandy, mm -hmm. brand, however you want to call it. So what I was focusing on with the uh, when I'm when I'm buying spirits, I usually you know get a good whiskey because I'm a big whiskey fan. Also, you know, yeah, I, love, I really love a good whiskey, and uh, so you know, so I get that because we don't make whiskey over here. So there, there is oh, that makes sense, Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nobody makes whiskey because fruit is readily available. I mean, okay, one thing that we you know we didn't talk much about now when I remember when you asked, uh, we didn't talk so much about it. Uh, when you look at the uh, geographical and historical aspect of of you know of, of, of all these spirits, you know why was whiskey made in uh, northern parts of Europe, like you know northern and western parts, like you know Scotland and Scandinavia, and you know uh, be because they didn't have so much fruit over there. They were mostly growing uh, grains. And you make, you know, you get make beer. You from from beer you make, you you, you get whiskey. And uh, in in southern parts, uh, Spain, Italy, Greece, Portugal, wine. So they were mostly making wine because there's so so much wine growing. It's it's it, like with us in Croatia, Dalmatia, and Istria regions, amazing wines, brilliant stuff. You know, if if you ever come to Croatia, there's so many places to see, uh, and, and and taste so so many good wines here. And uh, in the continental part of Europe, coming from I don't know, even you know, France, Germ okay, France also has wines, but let's say Germany, Austria, uh, Czech Republic, Sl Slovakia, come going down to the Balkans, you know, like uh, to all these countries of former Yugoslavia, and then Romania, Bulgaria, we have an abundance of fruit, so we made uh, spirits from fruits. So it's just you know, these are also the things that influence you know the uh, the tradition. Because uh, mm. it's, it's, it's what you had at hand, you know, what you, what you worked with. So that's why I, nobody in Croatia makes whiskey. There is a, one small distillery in the east of the country, but they really make small, so uh, really small amounts of, uh, of it. Uh, I haven't had the chance to try it yet, uh, but, but I will. But I'm, I'm really I'm really curious. How is it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So mostly, you know. When I go to the store, I, I get I get whiskey, you know. Like some, if somebody wants to buy me something for my birthday or something, they know, like you know, buy him a buy him a whiskey or buy him a gin or something because you know <laughs> he has so many fruit brandies of his own or, or from relatives or from friends. Yeah, that makes sense, man. So I, sense. I, I I don't know if I could recommend something, but if you ever come to this part of the world, uh, you know, Croatia, Serbia, even more. Uh, they they make more fruit uh, they, they make more fruit brandies than uh, than we make over here. Uh, so especially Slivovica, as plum brandy, uh, you can find some really good ones uh, over there. Um, but as a brand, I don't know, I don't know, I I, I, I wouldn't know if I, if I would say something, uh, it would be just like inventing stuff. Um, of that kind of yeah answer. right no, yeah. no 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 i wouldn't want you to yeah. no it's 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 mostly um i mean for me the reason i've stuck the reason i've got bottles of whiskey damn near everywhere mm -hmm. now is because i got interested i wanted to 
I knew I liked whiskey. Yeah. I wanted to make whiskey. And the easiest way for me to make whiskey or, or to learn about making whiskey was to go and buy a specific bottle that I knew, you know, like I, I tasted before and it had a certain flavor in it. I'm going to buy mm -hmm. it and then I can sit there and, you know, sip it and smell it and pontificate about how yeah. that flavor got put in this glass. And then I can go and try it and then yeah. try my spirit next to this spirit and so what you're thinking, how right? I screwed up, you know? <laughs> so, you know, if, if I wanted to, I, I need to make brandy, dude. I need to try it. I just, it's, it's the fruit. Like you said, it's expensive yeah. and it's hard to get hold of. And it's one of those products that it is more valuable as, you know, just even just sitting on the shelf at a supermarket, right? They, they can get a pretty good, pretty damn good price for that. Um, yeah. So you being able to yeah, go just, and buy something to start with first yeah. and, and, and try it to, to get an idea would be nice. But um, yeah, I feel you. Feel it's free good. to ask anything you need, you know, anything I can help with, you know, just, you know. Oh, I'll be keeping in touch for sure, man. It's, this is the, the best thing for me about doing this is that I get to talk to people like you, man. It's so cool. You know, like if I was just some dude in a shed, it's kind of hard to reach out and mm -hmm. um, to be taken seriously, I guess, but you know, like having this little platform as small as it is at the moment has given me the opportunity to talk to some amazing people and, and to meet people that's, like you. Yeah. It's, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be following you now all the time because I, I really like, you know, uh, I like about you. It's, you're, you know, you're natural, spontaneous. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's, really, that, that's you know, that's what, what I like in people. You know, it's just uh, making great videos, great podcasts. So just, you know, keep on doing that. Well, I appreciate it, man. So uh, one last time, tell people where to go and find you and uh, give them a rough idea. I know it's somewhere around the end of the year where they should be looking for your product. Are you going to be distributing anywhere or is it just going to be purely local? No, we're going to be. We're going to be. Wanna, we want to go uh, distribute our uh, spirits uh, anywhere we can. Uh, okay. Of course, you know, the whole world is the market. We are working on some strategies. and uh, But, uh, you know, the problem... It's in the beginning, it's going to be the quantities. You know, before, we, before you're able to provide quantities, if some distributors want, you know, nobody wants under a pallet. And as a new distillery, in the first few months, you know, you won't be able to have uh, so much for the uh, for every market you want to cover. Yeah. But as long as we sell and and get money for it, you know. <laughs> so it's it's just you know just have to be able to make money to. Um, to keep on working to you know doing doing what we like and uh, just like it's like it's almost no so ah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have one with you all right man so i i gotta say dude uh new zealand is a nice little test market there's only four and a half million of us down here oh yeah. and uh, we're surrounded I'm, by I'm water really love to come to new zealand i i was i was supposed to be in new zealand this year uh, are we Cheers, man. This is a nice drink my friend Liz from Christchurch, and congratulations on the wedding. Uh, oh, good on you, Liz. Yeah, it was it was a bit hard to organize uh, uh, this time to come for the wedding, but sorry, Liz, I wasn't there. I would really would have liked it to be there. So <laughs> here's to Liz and her husband. <laughs> Cheers, Liz. <laughs> All right, mate. This has been an absolute blast. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we will be in touch again, I'm sure. And um, you know what? Why don't you uh, Why don't you reach out to me? If, I'm sure we'll keep in touch anyway. But when the distillery is open and when the madness has died down, uh, why don't you come back and we can have a talk about how that whole process was? Yeah. And um, you know, we'll, we'll catch up with you again. Absolutely. We can do a podcast straight from the distillery. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I'm, I'm open right. for, for, for the questions, anything I can help with. And um, if anybody wants to contact me, you know, the, the contact information is on our webpage, capelladistilling.com. And uh, so, you know, I, nothing to hide. Uh, out of people have helped me uh, in the last couple of years. And I'm um, honestly and wholeheartedly willing to share anything, you know, I can with, with anybody, anybody who wants to know something. So. That's awesome, man. I the the distilling industry. I've I've been talking to a few people lately who have had the opposite experience to that, right? Where they've they've got a new, they've been thrown into a situation where they don't know the answers to something, and 
they've been trying to reach out and find people that will help them or mentor them. And it's tough, man. The old guard of the distilling world, you know, they, they, they're not so fond of sharing. But I see I see a light at the end of that tunnel. There's more and more people like you, like the guys at Cedar Ridge, like the guys at Iron Root that are happy to talk about what's going on and are happy to share the right. love. So, Cedar yeah. Ridge guys are amazing. Amazing people and, uh, you know, lots of love to, to everybody in Cedar Ridge. Thank you for everything. You know, th thank you for having me over there. <laughs> I'm actually going to, I've been talking to Murphy and I'm yeah. um, hoping he'll be on the podcast within uh, probably probably one or two episodes from this. But yeah. Oh, anyway. Really? Yeah. No, I, I'm, I can't wait. I finally got Say a bottle of spirits. spirits. <laughs> I will. I will. I finally got a bottle of the spirits. Um, it's the standard uh, Iowa bourbon. It's the old version, actually, the 40% mm -hmm. version, not the 43%. Um, but it's interesting. It's a little different. It's quite traditional, but there's something. I don't know. I've only really had the neck pour so far, so I got to. I, I love the podcast on one. Yeah, right. The podcast is amazing. Uh, I still have a, a bottle uh, over here that I haven't opened, and oh, uh, nice. so like, I'm all the time like, ah, uh, you know, I want to save it, you know, because I, I could, I can't, cannot find it uh, anywhere here uh, in our area. So it's like just, I'm just keeping it like for, for, for the, you know, some special special occasions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, All right, mate. Uh, yeah. We're going to stick around backstage. And we're going to answer some questions right. for the Patreons. But uh, thank you, mate. And uh, thank you for inviting me. So a huge, huge thank you to Nevin for doing this, for agreeing to have a talk to me, for taking the time to go out of his way and answer some uh, crazy hairy guys questions from the other side of the planet. Please, guys, if you are interested in this kind of thing, take the time to go and visit their website, capelladistilling.com. I know we mentioned a couple of bottles and label designs and stuff there that you're not going to be able to see if you're listening to the podcast. It's all on the website. Thank you so much to the Patreons as well for making this happen, and Gladfield Malt here in New Zealand. And once again, guys, visit homebrewing.org ctc to see the team at Adventures in Homebrewing and pick up your next set of ingredients. All right, thanks a bunch, team. I'm out of here. It's getting late. i got to get this edited and get it out for you. Keep on chasing the craft. I'll see you next time. See ya.